It's been too long. Too long since I built a 30 minute missions kit and with all the hype right now with the brand new 30 minute missions lines, including the upcoming armored core kits, I thought it was about time I actually revisited this line and got back into some of the kits I've been building up. And when I say they've been building up, they've been building up a lot. I've been prioritizing bigger releases lately, spending more time per video, that the production time per review takes a lot longer than it used to, which means non-priority kits, which sadly includes 30 minute missions, aren't getting visited. So today I'm just going to take a bit of an easy going approach to a lot of these kits that I haven't gotten around to, build them up pretty quick, and try and thin down this monolith of kits as much as I can. Anyways, usual, all these kits right here, I got through those awesome people over at Hobby Link Japan. So if you're looking for 30 minute missions, which you should be, these are awesome little simple but incredible mecha model kits, then you can get yours exactly where I got mine, which is through Hobby Link Japan. So the link is down there in the description. But yeah, let's take it easy. Let's build some 30 minute missions and then I'll get back into spending a little bit more time per video because I have a few interesting things I really, really want to get around to. Anyway, let's get into it. So the first thing we're going to take a look at today are the Volpanova. So there's two of these. There's the quad bike version and there is the tank version. I might take a look at this one before because it is built inside the box. I do not remember. But as far as I can see from the pile over there, these are the last kind of mecha. Well, regular style mecha mecha that we got from 30 Minute Missions. Let's check them out. As usual, not really an incredible amount of plastic inside of one of these boxes, but definitely a lot more varied than we would have seen originally with the Altos and the Portanovas. That is it right here. This is all the plastic that does come inside the box. So we've got quite a few runners. N again, not as simple as the original OG kits. And when it comes to the build of these, there's always two options. That is to go through the absolute full instructions like so, or you can just whip out this one little image on the back if you're used to actually building them, and this will get them done pretty quick. Let's do it. So when it does come to the legs in here straight away, these are very simple. You just need three different types of runners for the various colors. That's the joints, the, well, green armor and the kind of dark green armor. They all build up the usual kind of way. Just the upper leg, lower leg, connect them with the knee and then a foot. Super, super simple. And this right here is what you get in the end. Now, this is a very small mecha compared to some of the other 30 minute missions kits, which are usually around the size of an average Gundam of this as you can see, is definitely a short leg, only about up to a Gundam's knee. Next up, moving on to the waist unit. This is super simple. It's really just a few parts that attach together, but it's got a lot going on, as these kits always have since their inception. The most interesting aspect is always the fact that these have a nice little dropping mechanism in the hips. It's very, very simple. It's just basically a pair of pegs that allow these joints to rotate down a little bit with the legs attached. Very nice. When it comes to the torso again, it's not a whole lot of parts really to put together. Not a lot to cut out. It attaches together very nicely. We've got a moving neck moving shoulders inside of that. We've got a very interesting kind of C-clip little kind of rail around front. That's always nice for some attachment points. And then a backpack attached on via two C-clips around back. And then what we end up with from all of that is this right here. So we've got a nice little ab crunch right here. This little part in the front moves, this little rail, which is nice, a moving neck and overall this definitely turned out pretty cool. The legs then attach on like so, so. This is quite the tiny little unit. And like I mentioned, we do have some dropping mechanisms in the hips just so you can get even more poses out of these by dropping the hip down. So overall, nice tiny little mecha so far. So out of everything so far, what's definitely got the most to them is the arms. There's lots of little pieces, but the build is pretty much the same as what we would have seen before. You build up the individual units like the shoulder, the upper arm, forearm and the hand, and then it all attaches together super simply. What we end up in the end is pretty much the same as what we've seen on every one of these arms since the inception of the Alto. So it bends like that, just a single point bend. We've got a standard wrist joint. As for the attachment points, you've got one in the front, one around back. We've got two C-clips right there and two on the sides of the arms, which is always a nice option. Popping them on then, usual ball in socket and we're getting a little bit closer to a complete robot. And going from one of the most involved aspects of this kit to the least, that is the head. This is simple, it's just three pieces, two little grey, or should I say green pieces, and one nice clear section for in between. It attaches together super, super simply, and this right here is what we get in the end. So it's an interesting kind of small little head unit. It doesn't really have a head 
ness to it really. But what is interesting is this does have a neck, which is something I was never really expecting when these kits were announced. Kind of like with the Demi Trainer. But anyway, there we go. Looking good. So lastly, then we've just got the supplementary aspects of this particular mecha as well as the weapon. When it comes to the said supplementary aspects, we do have some wheels in here, which makes this the quad bike version. The other version, the other Volpanova in desert colors, that is a tank version. So in here, we've got some wheels. In that one, we've got some caterpillar tracks. These build up super simply, but they do look amazing. The weapon builds up in a bunch of modular parts, just like we would have seen with every one of these kits so far. And now getting these wheels attached onto the side of this particular mech just involves popping these little sections into the side skirt holes and then you just pop those on in just like so. So that's what they're like when they're attached onto the mech. Next up then we've got the included weapon which this time around is a kind of bazooka. These are always 100% modular weapons. You can attach the parts together in whichever way you want and then use them with other kits that are available out there. So... This is the business end, attaches into this handle section like so, and then attaches in like this. So that is the standard build, and this is a very nice looking bazooka. Then just slots on into the hand in the usual kind of way, simply and effectively. So anyway, finally there is what the Volpanova quad bike looks like once it is finished. So I also do have the tank version as well, which looks pretty much identical besides the color and a couple of little differences. The main little difference being the design of the head, the one we just built right there that has kind of a panel right along the top of his head like so, still has the same joints inside of it I will mention, and this one right here has that kind of mono eye look. This can move up and down over the head by removing it and attaching it back in again, but otherwise both of these mecha right here are identical. They come with the same weapon, which is this bazooka right here, but I do think I've featured this in a video before, so it means I have misplaced that particular weapon, and it does come with this tank little turret shield as well, so it does have a couple of extras. So when it comes to the general aesthetics here, these look pretty cool. Very small mecha, quite simple. They obviously seem like they fill a more of a support role than some of the bigger and more crazier ones we have seen from this line. There are quite a few differences between the two, from the heads to the kind of wheels that are on them and of course we do have a bit of an extra weapon with the tank version. Getting these into a pose is super simple, I will mention it is easy to kind of yank out the shoulders by accident but besides that super super simple and that is what both of these look like in a pose. Again very nice little mecha and as usual when it comes to 30 minute missions kits this is just the basic build. You can do whatever you want with these, you can buy multiple of the same ones, build them in different ways combine them together, there is tons and tons of options. Oh yeah, and there is also a little bit of a transformation. So these particular 30 minute mission kits do have a transformation, so, and it's very well thought out as well. I thought it would be a little bit of an afterthought. There is two forms. First off, you've kind of got a hybrid form, which is in between the two. Basically, you just bring the legs up around back like so. When you do drop down the backpack, it does allow for two little slots for the feet to attach into, so it holds the feet in place. Then you pop the wheels back on and you get this ride here, which is Basically, the upper body of the robot with some wheels for legs, and the legs are then wrapped around back. You do have a little bit of posability here, so you can have it lean into its turns and whatnot, but you do lose the ab crunch a little bit because it's locked in because of the backpack. There is this as well, so it can kind of raise up on its wheels ever so slightly, and there's a little bit of a spin so you can see what it looks like transformed. The tank version is pretty much identical to this. It has a hybrid version as well, as well as the full transformation, which we are about to look at. As for the rest of the transformation to the vehicle mode, you just have to spin the arms around, bring this little bar section up over the face. There are some nice locking mechanisms involved here. You're able to lock the sides of the forearms onto the backpack, which is actually the sides of the feet, which holds them in place during the transformation. We've got some locking mechanisms on the wheels too so they don't move around all over the place. Then you throw the wheel segments back onto the side skirting and then you can attach the missile launcher or the bazooka onto the upper section. And then this ride here is what we get. So this is it in its transformed mode. So we do have the top of the head here with this kind of little visor so it can see. When you actually transform the desert version, which I'm not going to do, you're actually able to pluck this little piece out, stick it into the top of the head so it does the exact same sort of thing, and you throw this onto the back instead as its turret. But otherwise, pretty cool. Also, the wheels do spin. They're a little stiff, but they do spin, and that is something that I definitely appreciate. On to the next kit. 
So next up, we're going to be taking a look at this. This is the Extended Armament Vehicle Customized Carrier. And when it comes to these extended armament vehicles, the usual routine is they can be built as a bit of a kind of vehicle sort of thing, like this time around. It's a kind of a truck trailer that you can throw your X-Max onto or have it as a kind of storage like this ride here. But usually when it does come to these, they can be used as well as kind of parts for modifying your mecha to make even bigger, more awesome customs. So once again with this particular kit right here, the build is exactly the same as what we would have seen with everything from this line so far. The parts inside this box are quite large because we are building what's essentially just a mobile platform for transporting these big old mecha around with. This builds up as a bunch of elements, of course all of these elements in a way are kind of like mecha lego and you can put them together in whatever way you want, use them to enhance various builds you have either of extended armament vehicles or X-Max. There are some stickers inside of the box that are these ones right here, basically for the windscreen section on the cab of this particular truck. Attaching these is simple enough, and then you just keep on building up, building up, building up parts, most of which are large. There are some moving aspects. When this is complete, it can be used like a truck, a flatbed kind of truck. It kind of has a rising and lowering kind of loading and unloading kind of way to it. They can actually be attached via these little kind of link segments and that means you can actually have a bit of a train going as well. So these are definitely very variable as these kits usually are. So you're always kind of going to benefit from buying more than just the one. Multiples will definitely give you more options, especially with the armament vehicles. They almost intend that you will buy more than one. That way, like I said, you can make a train out of them. So this ride here is what we get once this is complete. So it is just like a little truck. It does pivot on the axis right here. The secondary set of wheels are attached in under here, but you're actually able to pop those out and actually use this to kind of make it into a little bit of a longer part that is articulated at two points as opposed to just the one. We have a whole bunch of moving aspects around here. And I guess the main thing you can do with this is you're able to raise up these sides just like so for this to transport your X-Mac on. If it's a big X-Mac, these can spread out just like that. So you got plenty of space. And then your X-Mac just kind of lays on the back of it just like so. Now the one thing that kind of brings me down a little bit about this right here is it's not quite as cool as that one we saw from Kyokai Senki, uh, Ame Warrior at the Borderline, because that actually had moving wheels. The wheels on this do rotate, but they just don't kind of freely rotate when you're moving it around, which is a little on the sad side. Anyway, like I m mentioned, little bits can move and you can actually move this upwards like so for that kind of loading and unloading kind of thing. And we do have a little bit of a stand mechanism in here to hold it at whatever angle you do want. So this does work as a nice display base as well. This isn't that big of an X-Max, so I'm going to close this up. And that right there is what it does look like. That's pretty much it for this. It's a cool little vehicle. And according to the instructions right here, this is usable with various different action base kind of things and hanger kind of parts from this particular line if you do want to pop them together. And like I mentioned, you can actually chain them together almost like a sort of train. Pretty cool. So from a small 30 minute mission to a big one, this right here is the Providel Type Commander 02. Now, I did build the other blue Providel, but I never actually made a kind of video about it, it kind of was in the background of a video once, but these things are absolutely huge, have a massive tail, and are the biggest, most bestial 30 minute missions of them all. That's one beside an Alto. So, let's get it built. So when it comes to the build up of the Providel, this is very, 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 well, similar to your standard 30 minute missions kit. It's just the parts are that much bigger. For each aspect, it's still pretty much two segments that attach together. The joints are more akin to a standard high grade Gundam than what you'd actually see with a 30 minute missions and the kind of C clip, double C clip joints. They're a little bit more like a standard Gundam joint, but overall pretty much similar to a standard 30 minute missions, just a larger size. First up, we've got the legs and this is what they're like. They're definitely very bestial with the almost reversed limb joint up here. We've got all of these claw sections down here. Very simple, it's just a side to side movement of the toes. You can spread them out just like so. There's a joint in here giving you a little bit of that and then it's just kind of your standard kind of knee kind of situation right there. Of course, all the usual 30 minute mission stuff is here, all those three millimeter holes and all of those C-clip attachment points. Next limb. 
Next up then in here is the waste unit, and this is pretty much simple too. Now the standard waste unit is just a couple of parts, but it does have some supplementary aspects attached onto it too. And there is a kind of almost like a motorcycle style element to this. This isn't just a unit for using on its own, it can also be used with another 30 minute missions kit, like a mecha piloting a mecha. Anyway, this is what you get once it's complete. So as you can see, it kind of has that bit of a future motorcycle vibe to it. We've got the clear part up top. We've got these kind of handlebar segments right here. They can rotate like that, move back and forward. This is kind of what puts the Rex. Well, this one isn't called a Type Rex. This is called a Type Commander, but the standard version was called Rex. And it has a little bit of an opening mouth aspect to it. The butt round here that can move up and down and... There isn't any moving aspect to the actual hip here, just slots in, simple as that. Next part. Also, I will mention we do have this little segment right here. Now, this is kind of interesting. So you can just pop this segment off like so. This attaches on like that. This bit then attaches on like so. And this is where the actual, usually this is shown with an alto, but the alto actually sits on in there. I'll just use this guy for the sake of using it. This sliding bit peg for attachment and they attach on like so to pilot the bigger mech. We'll get back to that later. Next up is the torso and the torso on the Providel is probably the most, well, intricate aspect in regard to a 30 minute missions. Standard 30 minute missions is just the front, neck, shoulders, waist and back. And this just has a little bit more to each of those aspects than we'd see on a standard 30 minute missions. When this is finished, it's fairly large. This is it right here, clear part right here. We do have some moving sections underneath, these little flaps pop out, as well as this kind of little windscreen for when we do actually have something piloting it. The waist joint is kind of just a big old kind of standard joint like this. There's, you know, it's not really very mechanical per se, it's very simplistic. Normal neck, and we do have a standard backpack adapter, which is interesting. This is the same as any high grade Gundam, so if you want to stick something like some of Freedom's wings or something like that onto it, you totally could. Next up when it comes to the build is the arms. The shoulders and arms on this are, again, standard kind of 30 minute missions, but with more of a standard sort of normal Gundam Gunpla joint. It's not C-clips. Maybe C-clips would be too weak to hold something like this together. It's just a standard joint and some armor attached onto it. When you get it complete, it looks like this right here. We have two different types of hands included in here. This is the one I've left on. This one does have a bit of a moving thumb like so. The other version is a fist that doesn't really do much. The forearm is just two pieces attached together. There is the bend, there is the extend. This handy bit of armor gets out of the way so it can reach up and out. It's a simple enough arm, but it does what it needs to do. Pretty much like I've been saying throughout the build so far, this is quite simple, this being the head. It's just almost like a giant alto head. We've got three parts that attach together, a clear part that pops into the front, and then the commander style armor that, well, pops on over that. So moving back a couple of steps, there's a little bit of a look at what this looks like. Just as well, uh, well, a big alto head. Then the armor slots on just like so to give it the longer kind of profile. And then this commander segment just attaches onto the, the top right there. That's what the head looks like. Lastly then in here we do have some supplementary equipment. What I will show that is interesting out of this is there is a tail. This is made up of five tiny little segments that are identical with ball joints on them and then a little bit of a claw section for at the end and it all builds up very very simply as you'd expect from one of these kits. This right here is the tail once it's complete so it is a little bit movable like so. Not crazy movable but a little bit because of those ball joints and this claw here does open and close so you can actually use that to grab onto your enemies. And let's get this put together. Assembly in here, pretty much the same as any 30 minute missions, just attach the legs onto the waist, the waist onto the body, the arms onto that, pop on the head and then on with the tail. Super, super simple and you get yourself quite a sizable robot out of this. And once it is complete, you get an absolute big beast like this right here. I'm not sure what they were thinking with the big old uh, penis, but you can actually take this off and it looks like a decent robot when that is not attached. That's kind of an optional thing. It's uh, Someone thought that right there was a good idea. Too much zone the enders, maybe. Aesthetically, the Providel is one unique mecha without a doubt. It's big, it's bulky, and by 30 minute mission standards, is ridiculously unique. This is really cool. It's massive, bestial, has a tail. And when it comes to the individual detail on this, it is very nice. The parts do have a lot of detail on them. If you pan line this up, it will look incredibly mechanical. 
Actually, if you paint in some of the details as well, there's a lot of potential here. Battle damage, etc. always makes 30-minute missions kits look a little less toyish and a lot more heavy duty. However, out of the box, it still looks cool in that nice grey on white with the pop of colour with the blue clear parts. Now this right here is definitely a big mecha. There is the 30 minute missions we had a little while ago just for comparison. I will mention regular 30 minute missions is a little bit bigger. There is a high grade Gundam for comparison. So this will be a little bigger than the armored core kits. I'm guessing from taking a look at this right here and just popping on in a master grade Gundam as well for the sake of comparison. So this is quite the big kit. Next up when it does come to the articulation on this, it is a little bit cumbersome. The arms are quite good. They do what a general kind of high grade style mecha would do. So they do give you everything you would want. The head is extremely limited because it can't look around whatsoever. It's just kind of stuck in there. It can kind of move ever so slightly, but not a lot. So when it comes to the articulation on this, it is a little bit on the limited side, but at the same time, kind of interesting. The most limited aspect is definitely the head. It can't actually really move around much at all. It's got the up and down. It does have a full ball joint inside. It just does it can't turn. It's just so oddly designed. The ab crunch is interesting because it is just this here segment. So you get a lot out of it, but it's almost like two units moving via an arm as opposed to an actual mechanical ab crunch. So you do get a lot out of it. And you can get some nice bestial poses because of it, but it does look a little on the odd side too. But then again, you know, these are just kind of a fun kind of kit. Not necessarily all that serious yet. The arms here are pretty decent because they do the full kind of range of usual Bandai Mecha movements. So you've got the elbow there, bends like so, seems to be a double joint. Full rotation at the upper arm, you've got this flap and this arm can move up like so. So the arms are quite good, you can get a lot out of those and the thumb can move ever so slightly. The style of feet do kind of limit it a little bit, it's just kind of side to side pivot inside of that. So when you actually try to get this into any bit of a pose, it can be awkward but at the same time it does sort of work. Tail did pop off there, it's just polycap balls so it can't fall off occasionally. That can kind of move around nicely too. But the lack of being able to move the head kind of makes like dynamic poses a little bit on the awkward side. Like you're just trying to get into a kind of attacking pose like this and the head won't turn to kind of go with it. Which is a little bit lame. But on the whole, you can get some poses out of it. Not a lot. Finally then when it does come to the extras inside the box, we do get this big old sheet of decals. Now these are just standard style stickers, but there is a lot in here. It does say you can use them with pretty much whatever 30 minute missions you want. These ones down here are just kind of color ones. You can just stick them on wherever. There is a little bit of a gist inside of the manual. So they're just kind of stuck onto the legs here and there. No real kind of rules to it. And this version right here, as you can see, they're kind of stuck onto its legs down here in the different recessed areas. So you can pop them on essentially wherever you want. When it comes to weapons, we have this little cannon section here. Again, with all of these kits, you can do whatever you want with it. But what it says in the manual is just throw this here, a little bit of a double adapter bit right here, and just pop it onto the arm as a kind of arm mounted weapon, just like so. We also have these, which are one of my all time favorite things to come inside of a kit. These are just wires for doing whatever wire things you want. And we've got some varnish tube too. This just pops on inside of it. So it looks a little nicer than just a standard wire. And these are great for using in customs. Now, these are for attaching onto this thingy right here. They pop in using an adapter. I don't have the adapter cut out right now, which just allows them to attach in like so. And this is for attaching onto the back of whatever you're attaching onto the kind of motorcycle aspect of this particular kit. So that's what you can do. Pretty much for this kind of effect right here. Now what I used on my other version was because I didn't actually pop another kit on there. That's what it looks like when it is in there. My altos, I have no idea where they are right now. That's ah, good. I'll pop this guy in. So first off, you have to grab a couple of these little adapters right here. Now these are three millimeter to a hollow three millimeter adapter. You simply pop the wire into the hollow aspect just like so. Slide this down into the varnish tube like that. Then you get this additional aspect that then slides down it like so. And I guess hides the end of the varnish tube like that. Looking good. 
And that right there is what they look like complete. These look awesome. You can attach these into Gunpla or anything and they really add a nice mechanical aspect. They're poseable too. I will also mention these are sold separately in this. The customized material, what's this? Customized material, pipe parts, multi-joint. Now this has them in both black and red. So you do have a whole bunch of those inside of it as well as the adapter. So if you want these for really making a weapon look like it's packing some punch with some high capacity wires or just adding some regular wires onto some parts of your kits. That just looks so cool. I should have bought a hundred of these. Maybe I will. All right, so I'm going all in on attaching this guy onto the bike segment. So just like before, this attaches on via a standard three millimeter peg. So he holds on to the seat section like so. We've got some places to, well, pop the feet, to keep them up there. The thought of an actual guy in a mecha using a mecha to change gears on a giant mecha motorcycle thing, to me, is hilarious. You then pull this section off right now. And I will mention there's another silly mode with this. We actually just kind of spin the upper body, drop this little thing down, shove this into the back and now it's a t-rex kind of thing i'm not gonna actually fuck around with that today but that is something you can do and it is in the instructions of course you can do whatever you want with one of these because they're 30 minute missions they are mecha lego all right so these pipes attach into this section right here now again you can use this with anything like if you're thinking you want your gun plot to look a little bit more kind of crazy mechanical with wires and whatnot. This is a regular old Gunpla backpack adapter segment. So you can throw that into whatever you want. In this particular version of one of these 30 minute missions kits, we will have to drop this bit down. Again, this is not designed for this particular one. So it's going to be a little bit of a squeeze perhaps. Actually that popped on, not too bad. So now it's ready to pilot. Get those hands there onto those there handlebars, just like so, <laughs> ready to go. And we need to adjust this a little bit, pop that up like so, these pop down like that. This thing in jigger like so, get it up and up out of the way. This attaches in like that. So far so good. Get that windscreen up and over its head like that, you know, because you need to protect its head and then these pipes right here attach in just like that around to the mecha in the cockpit. Again, this is technically the alien bad guys mecha. This is meant to be the human good guys mecha, so they don't necessarily go together per se. But then again, there are no real rules to actually combining these into whatever way that you want. So there you go. That is what this looks like with something piloting it. That is over the top and a whole lot of fun. Next kit. So it's been a super duper long time since I've taken a look at a 30 minute sisters. They haven't built up. This is number 11, the latest one, I think. Back there, I can see 10. Oh, the rest are kind of blocked, but there's at least another few back there that I have fallen behind on. This right here is the, what's the Japanese here? Skiruna Diaz. I'm not joking. So what's it trying to say in the uh, Romagion here? It says, Tuki Runa. D earth. So we'll try and find something in between the Japanese and that there. So I'm going to say it's just Skirna D earth. Skirna. Something like that. Let's get it built. So immediately my first reaction here is they do not skimp on the plastic inside of one of these 30 minute sisters kits. These have come a long way than what I would have originally seen with one of the first or second ones that came out. They're definitely uh, going all out with these now. So when it comes to the build of the 30 minute sisters Tsukirina, this is pretty much like what we would have seen before. You can break apart all of the runners into tiny little runners. As you can see right here in the manual, that's the way it shows to actually do it. You've got your one, two, three, four, as well as the A, B, C, D you usually get in your runners. This is exactly the same with the Providel, by the way. You're able to break out the parts that you need just for each section. Now it says to go one, which is the head and torso, then two, which is the arms, but I always work from the legs up all of the time. I like to have something standing there while I work, so that's what I started with. Again, the build is like you see across the 30 minute missions range. That is, you build like the upper thigh, the lower leg, the foot, and then attach together with various joints. Super simple, super effective, and super speedy. When it comes to the way things are built in the manual, the head and the torso are all one section, so that's what I moved on to next. The faces in here are pre-molded and pre-painted, so the expressions are on them, but they're also split up very nicely. The standard face is just a face with all the detail on there. 
the blushy cheeks, the eyes is all there already. The alternate faces, those require a little bit of assembly. It's just the inside the mouth has to be assembled on. So that means those are pre-colored too. Very, very high quality. The build up of the head is simple. You just pop the face onto the main section like so, looking good. Then you build up the various elements of the hair. This is built up in a very smart kind of way which means you don't really see much lines or seam lines once it is finished. You do the main part, pop the face on, then you make the twin tails. And after that, then it's time to move on to the body. The body builds up in exactly the same sort of way. That is a bunch of segments, the upper body, the lower body, the skirt section, and then everything just attaches together in the end. And I'll just pop the legs on as well, just for the sake of having something building up as we're going along. Next up is the arms, fairly similar to what we would have seen before. There is no middle joint this time, but otherwise it builds up exactly the same. Simple, effective, and that is it to the actual figure itself. And finally, this right here then is what we get in the end. So I have to say I'm actually shocked. Bandai has improved these quite a bit since I last saw or built one, which is kind of impressive considering they were impressive to begin with, but they've become a lot more subtle with different aspects. There's a lot more, what can you say, like detail to the face. It's a lot softer. The eyes look really, really good. But overall, there's a lot more textures on the actual finished model kit too. We've got some full flat mats, some semi mats, metallic and clear, which really does make this look a whole lot different. Now I will mention this is just the standard version. You can change this with some armor that is included that we'll take a look at ever so soon. But as it is, out of box looking really, really good. Again, similar to what we would have seen before, but somewhat a little bit nicer. But there is one thing with these that have constantly... Well, goodbye. That kind of feeds right into what I was about to say. There is one thing with these kits that always has fucked me off since the beginning with them, and that is this right here. This does not work very well. It's the one thing that has not been improved, and that is this little section here is for attaching any kind, well, any kind of head stuff to it be it some kind of hairband or some kind of ears, but we get this little slot to kind of place hold when nothing is attached in here, and it's awful, awful for just kind of falling out and getting lost. So if you were curious as to how big they are, there is a high-grade Gundam, so in and around exactly the same size, give or take. There's the big old Providel that we would have been taking a look at a little bit earlier on in the background, so move that Gundam out of the way, and there you can see that it is quite a bit smaller than that right there, so it'll definitely fit on that motorcycle part, but we're speeding through them today, so I'm not going to check. So, what we've seen so far is really only halfway through this kit. There is a whole ton of equipment in here that does change this quite drastically, all of which kind of just builds up in the exact same sort of way, gold on black looking incredibly cool. We've got some gauntlets which are attached onto brand new arms, so this doesn't attach onto where it replaces a lot of parts. So we've got brand new arms that build up, some brand new legs that build up in the exact same way, but they're a little bit on the chunkier side, with a lot more gold. We also have a bit of a headdress, some other parts for a round back, and finally then we do have a little bit of a hammer. So this is called Tsukirina, so I assume it's something to do with Tsuki, which is moon, and the Japanese bunny with the mochi hammer that's up on the moon. I'm assuming that's what this is based on. But anyway, once you get everything put together, this right here, whoops, the second time I've knocked it, this right here is what you've got. So as you can see, it is quite a lot of extra stuff. Now stuff I'm not gonna look at is stuff that is left over on the runner, uh, of stuff that basically came on a previous released 30 minute sisters kit that would have came with bunny ears and the like these are usable with it a completely kind of different torso segment right here we do have some weapons and just various different leftover bits and bobs that we don't actually use in this kit this one we do i think so yeah all those are just leftover parts this is what we're about to use so according to the instructions here we're going to be losing the legs but keeping those little kind of disc bits in there. We're going to be losing the arms as well as losing the arm disc bits. So if you are building this kit in this format, you will be losing out on those parts right there. And then we will be attaching on these little shoulder, or should I say upper arm parts like that, leg parts like that, arm with gauntlet bits like so. And there's a couple of bits not attached, like these ankle blades go on there. And here I thought these were unused parts, but apparently I missed part in the instructions. And then flip around to the back, and this attaches into the bit of a spine hole right here. Just like that. Finally then, to top it all off, we do have some ears which attach onto that section on the top of the head, just like so. 
The hammer in here has a bunch of uses, but it attaches on mainly like this into one of the weapon holding hands, into this little bit like that, and this can kind of transform between a hammer and flip up like this. This part pops out, can pop in the end, and then you've got yourself a bit of a lance, but we're gonna stick with the hammer. That then just pops into the hand like so, and I'm gonna be getting rid of some of these parts for now. This part is a backpack adapter for using 30 minute missions backpacks. We've got a neck adapter in here as well. We've got some alternate parts for sitting poses. These hands I'm gonna move out of the way. Actually, I'm gonna go with the widespread dynamic hand over on this side. We do have two alternate faces in here. I'm gonna go with this grinning one. Swapping is the usual routine of just popping off the face like so. Attaching on the alternate one like that. Super, super easy. And that right there is what we get. We also have a little bit of alternate chest armor in here that can be used with 30 minute missions. Robot chests, so you can actually change out the whole front armor of this. But this right here then is what we get in the end. Grabbing one of Good Smile Company's simple stands, getting that into position. I think you can stick this into the back. Oh wait, we can probably stick it into this a little bit here. Yeah, that works very, very nicely. So when it comes to getting Tsukirina into a pose, this is, what can I say? It's a very smooth and seamless process. Nothing is loose and nothing is awkward, which is great. These kits have always been really good since the first one came out, but this one is definitely even more impressive. It's got a lot of additional parts, but they really gel with the design a lot nicer than what we would have seen with some of the originals that kind of, well, if you think about the original, original, original one and the speed armor that went in it, kind of clashed a little bit. This is nice. Finally, there it is in a bit of a generic attacking pose, and I will mention there's so much this can do that I did not show. We've got moving parts on the ankle armor, moving parts on the armor around back, moving parts on the arm armor, a bunch of things that I did not show. Again, we're just skimming over everything really quick, but this is a very, very, very nice kit. I am ridiculously impressed. Out of everything I've seen so far, this is what Bandai has definitely poured the most care into. It's an extremely, extremely nice kit. Speaking of kits, next kit! Holy shit, like some kind of fantastic mecha hydra of some description. I cut off a couple of heads and a whole bunch grow back. These literally just came in the door like, well, this morning, a couple of hours ago. Ah, uh, that's kind of ridiculous. I didn't actually know. Well, these are a little bit late, so these didn't come out this week. Uh, I didn't know there was actually some releases lately. So we got a fucking horse. Another forest dairy in another color that is blue. And these are some of my favorites. These are the Esposito, which transform into flight forms and that is in red man I don't know what to go with next I actually think it might be a bit of time for some uh I feel like we went robot extended armament vehicle 30 minute sisters but actually we went robot robot already so maybe it's another time for an extended armament vehicle and I don't have just two so I'm gonna go with the horse and this one right here that I got a few weeks ago the multiple legs mecha version now I wanted to do this uh, how can I say? There's some of these kits that you need to buy more than one of, especially when it comes to extended armament vehicles. This one especially. The horse, not so much, uh, unless you want a horse and a centaur. Uh, yes, I repeat, centaur. You can use this to build a mecha centaur, which is pretty cool. But this one right here, as it is, is just a little bit of a spider. But if you put multiple spiders together, what do you get? A centipede. There's a little bit of an idea there of what it can do might be a bit hard to see with the current lighting. But yeah, you can attach these ass to mouth, ass to mouth, ass to mouth, ass to mouth, like some kind of human centipede that is a robot. So that means you do end up with a whole bunch. And I've seen some of these with a whole lot. Let's see, how many segments? One, two. I feel like I need 10 more of these. That would be cool. But I've been putting it off for a while saying I'll grab a couple of more. Keep forgetting. Might as well build it today. Sadly, though, with just the one. But the horse is new, so that gets priority. So inside the box we get a few runners, not a whole lot, just a couple, all of which are in grey besides one clear piece. The build right here is super super simple, it's a bunch of units as usual with these kind of extended armament vehicle. All of the parts can be used individually, I noticed there's a part that looks like a massive thruster as its rear end, so you could use that as well. We do have a clear piece for building into the head section, the legs all build up as a bunch of parts. Same with the body and it's just very very simple and attaches together in the end to give you this ride here. So that is the finished product. We also have this little segment here, which is for making it into a centaur with some other parts. And I don't know, this uh, doesn't necessarily say horse too much to me. I guess kind of the head design looking a bit like a cockpit. It's not quite as horse as Funsaiki or whatever it's called, the uh, Gundam horse, but still this is pretty interesting. Like I mentioned, this whole section back here, 
really has some thruster vibes if you actually popped these parts off and just use this segment right here up on the backpack of something, you'd have yourself a mighty big thruster. Anyway, there it is spinning around in all of its mecha horsely glory, just so you can see all of what it looks like as well in its horse mode. Again, everything here, its legs, its head, its neck, it, all the different aspects of it, its tail, can all be used in whatever way you want to continue the kind of Lego mecha, or should I say mega Lego aspect of these particular kits. They're all different joints, they all have C-clips, they all have ball joints, they all have three millimeter peg holes, everything that you'd want is on here. So again, having multiple of these is really the way to go in case you find something on it that'll make a nice arm, a nice thruster, or something similar like that. If you're curious as to the size of a Gunpla beside it, there is a high grade Gunpla. So this is about as tall as a high grade Gundam is. And if you're curious as to whether or not a Gundam can sit on its back, yes, of course it can. If a 30 minute missions can do it, a Gunpla can do it too. Now, as you can kind of see, he is a little bit on the unstable part, but what you actually need is to get a joint sold separately to actually attach into these to attach your 30 minute missions or Gunpla on. Now, if you have enough of these kits knocking around, you might actually find that you have one, but usually these seem to be used up. This is part JA13, but a lot of these are that I've got with other kits are JA5, JA5 again, JA5. I definitely have one of these knocking around somewhere, but just not in the stuff that I built today. So you can actually attach it on via the usual Gundam hole if you want to. So yeah, of course, the next thing you can do with that is uh, use the legs on your 30 minute missions as legs. Or you can make a centaur. Now I've misplaced, well I haven't misplaced, I know exactly where that knight is. It's outside in a big crate of 30 minute missions, but I'm not going to be looking for more 30 minute missions than I actually need around the place. But the super important question to me, all of the time, every of the time is, if it can be used with 30 minute missions, can it be used with Gumpla? Can we use this joint, this little bit right here, to use it with a Gundam kit? But, uh, oh, hold on. Mm, the joint on this one isn't particularly big enough, but if you pack that in, yeah, you will be having yourself your Gundam Centaur. Now, this upper body right here is the beyond global version of the high-grade Gundam, so it isn't a standard kit by any margin. So that does mean this joint could be a little different. It might be a little different. Let's try another kit. Now, I'm pretty sure I would bet that we have the exact same kind of joint as the 30 minute missions right here on Gundam Barbatos, if it would actually give it to us. These kind of polycap ball joints have been retired from most modern kits, but uh, yeah, there we go. Gundam Barbie definitely has it. It pops on. The kind of narrow Barbatos waist does look a little bit funny in with that, but hey, there you go. You've got your Centaur Gundam Barbatos. Just uh, paint that all up in Gundam colors and you've got yourself something beautiful. Next kit. All right, next up in here is the multiple legs mecha version. This of course is that kind of insectoid extended armament vehicle, still lamenting the fact that I don't have 10 of these to chain together into some kind of cool mecha mukade, but we're just gonna have to make do with what we have in here while I Try to remember that I want more of them. <laughs> Press buttons, get kits. Press buttons, get kits. Oh man, you can make a big cool hand out of them too. Hmm. So jumping on into the build of this little guy right here, which I forgot the name of already. I think it's called Multi Legs. So the same as usual, a whole bunch of little gray parts. We do have one sticker for the eye section in here. It pops onto a little kind of hexagonal bit and then you build the head sections on over it and it does look pretty cool. But where it gets really, really cool is when you work your way to the legs and the arms. The arms are these kind of little snipper kind of clipper kind of bits. We do have a little arm for attaching onto those and these would look great just even attached onto any 30 minute missions mecha. After that then, when you build up the little elements of the body, you've got two central aspects to this, two little bod pieces. And basically, if you want more of these little bod pieces, you'd need to buy more of these little guys. So two and one, if you bought three, that'd be six. If you bought 10, that would be 20, and you'd have one big giant centipede of a mecha kit. The legs are very nice too, they're multiple parts. Four points of articulation when actually attached onto the little robot itself, extremely impressive. And attaching them on is the usual kind of 30 minute missions big ball joint. That's the same for the legs and for the clippies up front. Lastly, we do have a little bit of a turret up top, which looks pretty cool. Almost has a little bit of a battleship turret feel to it. And the whole thing is ridiculously impressive. 
And this then is what we get in the end. All I can say is this might be my favorite extended armament vehicle since that cool one that's just a small mech on its own, the kind of bipedal one. But this one is just so cool. It's got so much going on and a massive amount of potential. The articulation is great when the leg doesn't just kind of fall off like that. These kind of ball and socket joints tend to be a little bit on the weak side themselves sometimes. Just the more you can move them around, the more likely they are to fall out. But this is what we got. Again, if you do have multiple of these, you can actually attach multiple of these little body segments together and get yourself a big old cool centipede. But as it is, it is still pretty nice. The battleship style cannons up top definitely have a lot of major potential if you wanted to make something, well, absolutely gigantic and almost battleshipy out of the 30 minute missions parts. I'm just going to grab a couple of these here rocky thingamabibs just to show how cool these particular legs are. So if you've got like a kind of uneven terrain or something like that, you're able to actually pop the legs up onto it and get yourself an extremely nice pose. It can move around quite nicely. The body is quite prehensile. We've got those really cool claws up front and all in all, this is just so cool. So next kid at this point, it's give me 30 minute missions or give me death. This right here is the 30 minute missions Esposito. What is that, a lambda? A gamma? It's definitely not a lambda. I think it might be a gamma. I don't think it says anywhere. Heck, we'll just call it the Esposito Red. When it comes to the build of this kit right here, it's exactly the same as we saw with the Volpanova. The exact same frame as well. Basically, every element like the upper leg or the lower leg is two parts. You've got a joint for in between them both. It locks with C-clips. The waist is exactly the same with the same dropping little joints inside of that as well. The torso is a little bit more involved in this because it does have a little bit of a transformation to a kind of flight form. So there is a few more parts and some articulation in the chest. The arms are exactly the same, built up the same. The head is very nice with a bit of a clear part. Usually with these kits, the clear part isn't too contrasty, but you can mix it, match it with other Espositos to get a bit more contrast in the clear parts. And this right here is what you get once it is complete. So the mecha itself is a longer kind of mech than we would have seen with the Volpanova. I'll grab a Gundam off the shelf so you can see its size. So it is taller than your average high grade Gundam by a little bit. So it is a tall mecha. Anyway, when it comes to the equipment that we have in here, there is the Esposito. We've got a couple of these shield bits right here. They should pop onto the forearms just like so. They can go either or away. I'm just going to pop them on this way just for now. So you could use those for some nice punching attacks. But in the manual, these are actually pointing up the way. So let's get them flipped around so they're doing just that. And we've got this section here that makes the nose in flight form and in the instructions this is just attached onto the back of the shield like this while it is in robot mode probably to have a more enhanced shield. We've got a couple of weapons. These are these streamlined kind of beam rifle kind of things. They pop into the hands like so. And there is number two and we do have another weapon in here as well which is this one right here. This kind of double barrel thingamajig. Uh, when it's not in use the instructions say to actually just stick it into the back like so. I guess, you know, it's handy to have a gun in your back in case someone comes up from behind you're like, blam. And just grab one of Good Smile Company's amazing simple stands just to get this in a little bit of a pose in the air. So that just pops up into that hole just like so. And we'll get it into a little bit of a pose. So there is the red Esposito in a little bit of a pose, as you can see, looking pretty cool. Personally, I prefer the more subdued colors like the grays and the whites, but this definitely gives it a lot more color. The knees are very nice because the armor is actually on the central aspect, so it almost seems like it has a bit of a moving knee gimmick, but it doesn't actually. It's just the way it moves, and overall, it does look incredibly, incredibly nice. So I guess one of the major unique points to one of these Espositos is the fact that they do have a transformation to a flight form. So I'm just going to pop off the weapons first and the weapon around back. You also remove this nose section off of the shields. At its torso here, the Esposito can just flip on back just like so. So that is the main aspect of its transformation. Then we do have a couple of subtle movements like rotating the feet around to the back. You bring the arms backwards just like so. And then the feet flip up into the little gap in its waist. A little something like that right there. Next we prepare the nose by popping this little bit of a twin rifle section 
onto the shield and that also works to hold that on as the nose segment up front just like that. Now I will mention this is definitely a bit of an inferior transformation compared to what we would have seen on the Vulpa Nova because there is no locking aspect so the more you move it the well more bits kind of flop around on you and you have to constantly keep readjusting it. You can pop it onto an action base just like so and that right there is what the flight form looks like. So it does work out pretty well in the long run, but it can get readjusted all over the place on you without any locking mechanisms. I guess Bandai did learn from this and then added that in the Vulpanova to make sure everything locks solidly in place post transformation, but it does look like a pretty cool flight form. Next kit! So kind of 30 minute missions kit we have to take a look at today is a part set. This is the option part set 15, multi vernier, multi joint. So verniers and joints, that's exactly what we need to bring our Esposito to the next level of speed. So when it comes to these kind of option part set, basically it's a bunch of bits that you can use in whatever way you want. And there's a couple of examples used with a, I forget what it's called, but yeah, you can use it with the 30 minute sisters, 30 minute missions whatever you like and there is the little list of parts once again this is one of those kits that it's worth buying a couple of two or three they're very inexpensive but you can use these little verniers and thrusters with whatever you want 30 minute missions gunpla whatever has three millimeter holes in it this is an option set so i expect to see a lot of gray in here so it's just two bags of gray runners and the instructions these are quite simple as you can tell from the fold out instructions it's just the one sheet so the front side shows how to make your verniers and the back is the various different like little options. So if you're ever looking for some kind of adapter like to make a slot into a three millimeter peg, a shoulder joint into a three millimeter peg or something to kind of attach on shields or just some moving arm parts, they come included in these. So these are, like I said, worth getting multiples off. So once you cut out everything from page A, you get this big old pile of bits which are absolutely glorious and mightn't look like much at first. But this is what you use to build up all of your beautiful, beautiful verniers. I'll also mention that each of these verniers has a 3mm hole on the back of it. So if you just want to stick a vernier in somewhere, you fucking can. You might be like, well, my Exposito or Esposito right here is looking pretty good. But what if the knees had some verniers on the end just to make it kind of look like, you know, it's actually got some thrusters. So you've got those kind of options. And if you want like kind of different looking thrusters, not so straightforward, maybe something a little bit more sci-fi, there are a lot of other options in here to what kind of give it a different kind of vibe. There is the option of just various kinds of vents and stuff as well, which really do have that kind of cool effect. You can pop them on whatever, that's a nice touch. Then you've got yourself your little aspects like this. So this is essentially just an armor plate with the peg out this side right there. So if you wanted to do something like a thruster on the leg, like it's showing in the instructions right here, you can do that. You have an option of three different size thrusters. You've got your very small all the way up to your very big. There is a medium sized one in there too. There's also an extender segment. So you throw the extender in like that and then you can just throw a thruster into the end of it so you've got an even larger looking thruster. Maybe something that looks a little bit more like it's engaged or at full tilt. We then have these flat thrusters, so you can pop these onto the surface of stuff as well, which is really cool for what look like really powerful, maybe ion thrusters. They don't necessarily look like they use kind of flame or fuel. These also come in three sizes and they also come with an extender. The extender looks like this right here, which looks like it would be pretty cool on its own. Stick it onto the surface of something and you've got yourself a nice bit of armor. Attach on one of these verniers and you've got a cool vernier. Not the greatest place to stick one of these kind of things, but to just give you a little bit of an image of what it would look like attached on. This has great possibilities. It doesn't say anything about doing this, but I assume you can now attach this onto the extended piece for something like that. Now that doesn't look particularly right because you can see into the hollow aspects of it, but it's still pretty cool. And what if you're like, I don't like round, I like square. Well, Bandai has got you yet again with that. So here is a square variant. This can be used with those little vent style thrusters. We've got that one as well as an extension piece like so, which is an extender. And this works with those kind of ones I showed a little while ago. So if you want this on the side of a leg or arm or backpack, you can do that. We also have this square piece that just attaches onto a surface like so. This can also be used with one of the shaped ones like so, or one of these smaller ones like that. So we've got another 
style vent or vernier. That is really sci-fi. I love that. And then there's more. There's this one right here. This is a flat plate. Again, this can stick onto a leg, arm, whatever, by this part right here. We do have some vents in the bottom right there, so it's a thruster in its own right. But we also have a bunch of surface mountable parts for on that. Like, there you go. Now you've got some side thrusters. Or if you'd prefer some armor, which attaches on like so. And of course, you can just use those armor parts as kind of armor plating here and there to detail up kits. Next up, we've got more armor flaps. This attaches onto a part so it is articulated. This is just a big old armor flap that can move like so. It has an attachment point there so you can use it as a hinge. Some more armor parts with thrusters in the sides. This doesn't have anything for attaching onto it. And then just these cool armor panels. Finally, then we do have a bunch of plates of joints. You see these in a lot of these particular option sets. So you've got handles, you've got parts for attaching, well, converting different aspects into different aspects, different adapters for this and that. The best thing around, these little covers for the three millimeter holes. So if you don't actually like three millimeter holes and joints, 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 joints. These are handy for Gunpla and 30 minute missions alike. Anyway, the plan here is to use this stuff right here to kind of Update the Exposito right here to be something a little bit more, well, armored up like a Mark II or something similar. Like I liked the idea of some thrusters around back here just to make it look like it actually, you know, has some kind of propulsion. So I'm going to go with the largest ones. I think I'm going to be kind of transforming this back and forth while checking out the individual parts just to make sure everything kind of works out and isn't really popped into a place that doesn't really make much sense. Like those thrusters on the knees, they actually work out pretty cool in a kind of Gundam Rubris kind of way. Quite cool that Bandai give you enough parts to kind of finesse your design. I've kind of decided to go for the medium sized verniers on the knee as opposed to the large ones, because the large ones kind of stick out a little bit too comically far. Gonna go with these here armor segments up on the shoulders to kind of make it look a little more armored up. There we go with number two. I noticed in the Esposito manual, they actually threw a couple of these on here. These larger thruster sections, they kind of enhanced the ones that were already there, looking pretty good. And honestly, from here on out, I'm just going to steal the ideas right from that particular manual. They attached one of these on here, nice bit of detailing up. These thrusters right here onto the arm aspects like so, so I guess they're like intakes when it's actually moving. I'm going to pop these square ones on the sides of the legs, so they're actually giving it a bit of thrust while it's in. This kind of robot mode and then they can actually swing around like so for when it transforms so to give it a little bit of a extra transforming mechanism but now i'm like do i want these kind of long bits on them or not that kind of doesn't look as kind of streamlined i'm gonna go with the shorter version I'm gonna try as much as i can to actually add stuff on so i'm gonna add this heavy armor onto the front skirting Armors like so. Bit of a crotch thruster doesn't hurt in case it needs to move upwards quickly while in the air. And it covers up the hole nicely. Speaking of covering up the holes nicely, you do only get a couple of these per kit, which is a little bit of a letdown. It's going to stick them on the side of the rifle, but what do they look like? That makes no sense, but I like that. At this point, it's just sticking on as much as possible while kind of holding the design together. But yeah, speaking of covering up the holes, these little things are really cool. I wish they included more of them. They just pop into holes like so. It looks like mechanical detail instead of Swiss cheese. And there we go, two of those. These little guys look like a good cover for that sort of part like there. A little bit of rear armor actually fits on absolutely perfect. This is where you can get lost in playing around with these things. And speaking of getting lost and playing around with it, I just felt so let down by not being able to add on these absolutely giant thrusters. They just felt like such a loss. So I'm going to find somewhere else for these little guys. At this point, it's kind of common sense out the window. I don't know what this intake is, but why the hell not? Add some extra bulk to the rifle. So after all of that, the last little issue is this had nowhere to go. Now, I want to attach it onto the hole in the back right here, but I forgot this kit also does come with a bunch of different kind of little attachment points. So I think it's time to make a little bit of a tail. And after all of that snipping and snapping, this is what I got in the end. This has actually changed it quite a bit enough to make it look ridiculously cool. It is, well, as I've said before, I do find these parts match a little better with the white and gray. X-Max that are out there, but of course this is just a base. You could 
undercoat the entire thing here and paint it whatever color you want. This just looks so cool. The amount of options, parts, and different kits out there from 30 Minute Missions right now is actually overwhelming, to say the least. There's so many options, but this just works so, so good. My immediate thought with this right here is that Hopefully it got some kind of generator update as well because the amount of new thrusters that have been added onto it. Also, in my own little head cannon here, these guns now have their own onboard generator because, you know, there's a whole lot of power drainage going on all over the place. The venting on them is cool too. Overall, this looks great. There is the tail that I did put together for on this, so that does allow the shield and that cannon to be attached. And you've also got yourself a little bit of a nice cannon that can come forward like so, and a bit of scorpion kind of tail to it, man. You can do whatever you want. Anyway, let's transform it and see how it looks transformed. In my mind, I believe that the tail here kind of flies off because the tail isn't actually, or should I say the shield, is on the arm before it transforms. So I assume there's some tech in universe where it can fly off almost itself and reattach on where it needs to, but I just believe this can kind of fold up into itself somehow and go back to its standard normal form. Sadly, I do have to lose the crotch thruster because that's where the stand will be attaching into when it is displayed in its flight form and everything else is the same as before. So get them up like that. The torso folds upwards just like so. Then the legs move in there, blocked a little bit by the extra armor that I did attach on, but you can actually get that line so it does all work out. The arms then turn around and point backwards like so. I forgot I've got these thrusters on the sides of the legs now. I almost forgot I have these thrusters on the sides of the legs now that kind of turn backwards like so. So we've got extra thrusters round back. These shields then rotate round to the front. And then finally the nose attaches on in the exact same way that it once did just like so. And there we go, there is the finished flight form. So it's got a whole lot more thrustage going on around back. It's definitely having a little bit more trouble holding together, but I guess that's what happens when you're making a prototype. And you said mobile suit, well mecha, it's gonna have its little issues. Then you remove the parts that are in the way and then attach on something new, but overall it works out quite well. Pretty cool and ridiculously addictive to play around with. So anyway, that right there is it for today's video. And what can I say? 30 minute missions have been around for a while now, but this has been a line that's continued to evolve and change and give so much. Some of the upcoming kits look even more mecha than before and have come such a long way since the Alto and the Portanova we first saw. These are some serious mecha kits. Right out of the box, they can be a little bit plain, but what you can add to them is ridiculous. There's so much out there, so many options. Everything has its place inside of the box that it comes in and can be used in whatever way you want as well. It is ridiculous. The sky is the limit. There is no limit when it comes to building mecha model kits with these. So, so much fun. Anyway, I will throw a link down in the description. I got mine through Hobby Link Japan. You can too. As always, thank you so, so much for watching. Make sure to come back for more mecha model kit reviews and I'll see you next time.